Why you should kill more characters, today on Dungeon Craft. Welcome to Dungeon Craft, I'm Professor Dungeon Master, and this channel is about playing the ultimate game of D&D and other role-playing games. And I'm Deathbringer. Level up your game by subscribing and click the bell icon for notifications. Today I'm wearing my plus one vest of protection because last week I expressed the sentiment that D&D was getting a little too soft and characters were superheroes who never died. Today I'm explaining more of why I feel that way and how you can make your D&D game a little deadlier and I'm going to give you a new critical death and dying chart. Before we begin, I want to say that everything on this channel is my opinion. It's how I think you can play a better game of D&D, but you should do whatever you think is fun. Whether you play Legolas or lion -O, it doesn't matter to me. On this channel, I frequently engage in hyperbole and joking. For those of you born in this century, joking was a verbal exchange meant to provoke spontaneous amusement and laughter, and it died out somewhere around 2017. So in the last video when Deathbringer slaughtered the tabaxi, I want to assure you that no actual tabaxi were harmed during the production of the video. And when I say every D&D character seems like a furry superhero, that is hyperbole and a joke. It's my funny way of saying that all these characters are starting to look the same. And I included images from Cat and Puss in Boots because I just find anthropomorphic animals to be just intrinsically funny. Look, I rest my case. So play the game you like, but if you choose to watch Dungeon Craft, you're going to have to have a sense of humor or grow a turtle shell. There's no gatekeeping here. I have a large gate and it is wide open and it leads to a player character graveyard. I like a deadlier game and I'm not shy about it. Why? Because if you can't lose, games are boring. I once played Trivial Pursuit with my wife's family and they insisted on playing without a board, which I found as boring as watching paint dry. And I, I expressed the opinion, you can't have a game called Trivial Pursuit if you eliminate the pursuit part. And their response was, we're having fun, so what does it matter? And it doesn't really matter if you're having fun, but I'm never playing Trivial Pursuit with them again. And I think that games where no one risks anything and no one dies have a very short shelf life. And if you like a non-lethal version of D&D &D or a version where the players need to give permission for the dungeon master to kill their character, you're more than welcome to it. That's the thing, by the way, that's coming. But personally, I don't prefer to play that way. When I play D&D, I like the idea of risking my character's life. It's, it's like a token economy. It's like when you play blackjack, you're afraid of losing your money. In D&D, you are betting your player character's life. And there's a long literary tradition for that. Conan is nearly killed in his first story, The Phoenix on the Sword. Elric kills his friends and lovers and destroys the entire world. Arya Stark sees her father, mother, and brother slaughtered. She's stabbed in the gut and nearly dies. And when she finally kills Walder Frey, she has earned it. Joseph Campbell called this the Road of Trials. I just feel in some D&D games, this is turning into the Road of Minor Inconveniences. It's as if some players, some, not all, they want to play the master assassin Arya Stark without all the other stuff, so they write it into their backstory. I prefer a game where the Road of Trials is first to third level and not every player character survives. To me, that is the spot where you're going to see the most player character death. And it helps with the verisimilitude of the game, the believability, because if everyone can survive to very high levels, why doesn't every surf and farmer in the world just take their pitchfork, crawl in a cave, and drag some treasure out? Which brings us to the technical stuff, what I consider to be the two worst rules of D&D, and they are death saves and rests, both short and long. And I'm not down on the concepts entirely, I just don't like the way they're written currently. I like the idea of maybe recovering D4 hit points after one combat once per session, but a short and long rest where you can recover all your hit points in a very short period of time undermines suspense. And for those of you who say, this guy's just an old grognard and he should stay back in the first edition, there are a lot of things about first edition I didn't like, Thacko and negative hit points. I think it is the worst rule in the first edition. For those of you who are not familiar, you got reduced to negative hit points and you would lose negative one hit point per round until you reach character death. And within that time period, your player character friends had to get to you with healing or you'd die at negative 10 hit points. I never liked that idea. And I actually think the mechanic for 5e is better. I like the idea of rolling a die roll to save your character's life. It's exciting. It's like you're fighting death itself. Now my problem with the die roll is that the save is a 10 or higher, and all you need is three to live. An 11 or better would give you a 50% chance, but a 10 or better raises it to 55. And if you roll about 10 characters out, that's gonna give you a two thirds chance of survival. And of course, with players and their magic healings, 
it's very easy for them to get to you and again I think that undermines suspense. Another old school idea that I don't like is you die at zero hit points because that also eliminates a suspenseful opportunity. I love the idea that your character is injured and he's bleeding out and the players have to rush against time while fighting this other monster to save that player character's life and to grab onto their hand and they're like don't die on me buddy. What I wanted was a mechanic that blended a saving throw with a critical hit table a la Warhammer. And I looked at a lot of games for inspiration. Black Hack, Merrick Borg, Index Card RPG. Like, I like Index Card RPG. You roll a D6. I think he's recently changed it to a D4, and the character is going to die in that many rounds, and they've got to make a death save every round. I really like that idea. So I compressed these ideas into a single chart, and this is what I came up with. When reduced to zero hit points, roll the D20 with no modifiers on the chart below. A roll of 13 to 20 means the character wakes up in one round with D4 hit points. And I did that because it's really boring to just wait around. You're not going to get off without a scratch unless you roll a natural 20. You're going to end up losing a fingertip, an earlobe, get a noticeable scar, or lose a few teeth. You can also break a collarbone and end up dealing with a, a broken arm or get a massive head wound that can reduce your intelligence permanently by two. 10-11, you're bleeding out, you make a DC saving throw every single round, and if you fail, you die. And the reason I made this decision is because I like the idea of the player characters not knowing how much time they have left before their friend dies. That means they have to rush to them right away and save them as soon as possible, raising the tension. On an 8-9, to nine, you succumb to your injuries, but you get a death speech. And on a 1-7, to seven, you're disintegrated, immolated, masticated, impaled, or beheaded, and death is instantaneous. And again, if your players are upset at that, don't use it. But if you like the idea of that old school kind of Warhammer, Roll Master, critical hit chart, but you don't want to deal with all the crunch, I think this is a good compromise. Other tips for death and dying. I recommend, even for new game masters, that you make your to hit rolls for monsters right out in public. So that if you roll a natural 20, that monster, just like the PCs, gets an extra damage die. And the players know that you are not pulling your punches. I know a number of game masters frown on using this rule because the player characters are attacked more than they get attacked. but. So what? They also have more hit points than the monsters that they're facing and more spell casting and more powers. So I think it evens out. And it's not that you want the character to die, but just the threat that it could happen, that it's happening live, that you're working without a net, and the dungeon master is not control. For one moment, the dice are in control. And yeah, I've rolled multiple 20s all at the same time, and to the point where the players took my dice away from me because I was too lucky that session. But that's part of the fun of the game. Rolling out in the open is just something that it's not changing the rules at all, but it just adds to the threat level, and I like that. The other question I get asked by new Dungeon Masters is, if the player character dies, what do you do with the player? And the answer is, you never want the player to be bored. What I do is I have a backup character on hand so that if the player character dies, they can play their backup character. You can create these right when you make up the first characters. and. This backup character will gain levels at one lower than the player character. That way, if Ragnar the Barbarian dies at level 4, the new Barbarian, or Spellcaster, or whatever, comes in at level 3. So, there is, you know, a penalty if you died, but at the same time, they're not so low level that they can't do a bunch of stuff, and they're, you know, they have to start at level 1 again, because that's no fun. And you're going to have that character enter as soon as possible. It could be in the middle of the combat. They were around the corner, and now they just showed up to save the day or optionally in the very next room. But it's never fun to just have to sit out and watch the session. You've already been penalized by losing the character. You don't want to lose the player's attention as well. So those are my ideas about death and dying, but what do you think? Put it in the comments below. Also below you'll find links to our Dungeon Craft Facebook group and Patreon, where you can get tons of cool stuff, including this death and dying chart. Also, tune in for next Tuesday on Dungeon Craft, where I have a follow-up video on how to make your game more grimdark. And if you like this video, you'll like that one as well. Once again, for Dungeon Craft, I'm Professor Dungeon Master. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you soon, and until then, may all your rolls be 20s. Deathbringer again. What's the one thing the millennial rogue couldn't take? A joke. Ha 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 ha. Click on these videos for more Dungeon Craft.